During his 1961 campaign for mayor of Atlanta, Georgia, Ivan Allen Jr. pledged to build a modern ballpark in order to attract a Major League Baseball franchise. He'll win the office, and soon after, he'll begin talks with Kansas City Athletics owner Charlie Finley to relocate his team to Atlanta. Though that deal eventually falters, Ivan didn't plan on giving up his Major League dreams. Not by a long shot. When the Braves began playing Milwaukee for the first time in 1953, they were the hottest ticket in the country, drawing a then National League record 1.8 million fans. This would be the first of six seasons in a row with the highest attendance in baseball. But they weren't just popular, they were winners. In 1957, they defeated the New York Yankees to become world champions. Even as the team continued to win, however, the attendance of their games began to decline. In 1962, attendance cratered thanks to, in no small part, a county ordinance banning fans from bringing their own beer into the stadium. After the season ended, owner Lou Perini had had enough. Fed up with the apparent unappreciation of his ball club, he sold the team to a group led by Bill Bartholomew for five and a half million dollars. Bartholomew and a few of his friends had sold their minority stakes in the Chicago White Sox in order to purchase the Braves. Behind closed doors, they almost immediately began shopping the Braves to a larger television market. Down south, Mayor Allen announces that an unidentified team had given him a verbal commitment to relocate their team to Atlanta, provided that a stadium is available by 1966. In April of 1964, the ground is broken on the site of the upcoming 52,000-seat facility. Rumors run rampant about who the team is, and by July, the rumors are confirmed. The team moving to Atlanta is the Milwaukee Braves. Milwaukee officials immediately threaten to sue the Braves if they don't finish out their lease of County Stadium, which expires after the 1965 season. The team counters with an offer to buy out the year with $500,000, roughly two and a half seasons worth of payment. The city declines. Though they're able to get 33,000 fans in the seats for the April 15th home opener, the team can't draw that many fans over the next 13 games combined. Fans know the team is leaving and are effectively showing their anger with a boycott. Regardless, the team continues to win. By mid-June, they're 34 and 24. Braves ownership again begs the city to take the 500 grand and let them move at the All-Star break the next month. The city doesn't consider the offer at all. In August, the state of Wisconsin sues the Braves, the National League, and Major League Baseball itself, claiming they had violated the state's antitrust laws by allowing the team to leave. Though the Braves start the season strong on the field, they slump in September and finish the season in fifth place out of 10 teams. Less than 560,000 tickets are sold all year. With the season through, the Braves move their offices down to Atlanta. A group from Milwaukee pleads with the MLB to grant their city an expansion franchise. The National League blows them off. All that's left is the state's antitrust case, and in spring of 1966, it's finally coming to court. After weeks of arguments, Judge Elmer W. Roller retires to his chambers on the morning of April 12 to begin formulating his judgment. That night, the Braves take the field for the first time at Atlanta Stadium in front of a sellout crowd. They'll go on to lose in 13 innings. The next morning, Judge Roller still hasn't left his chambers. State Attorney General Bronson LaFollette remarks to a reporter, I've had two children and waiting for them wasn't as bad as this. 36 hours after Roller entered his chambers, he finally emerges, an hour before the Braves take the field again that night. His verdict? The Braves in the National League violated Wisconsin antitrust laws. Major League Baseball has to bring a new expansion team to Milwaukee by 1967. If not, the Braves would have to return before June. The Braves lose their game that night. Six to nothing. In Atlanta, the news is met with apathy. 
He saved a lot of lives, says Braves manager Bobby Bregan. If he had ruled the other way, a lot of folks might have died of shock. The Braves in the National League appealed the decision to the Wisconsin Supreme Court, and three months later, the higher court overturns the verdict by a narrow vote of 4-3. The state of Wisconsin appeals the new decision to the United States Supreme Court. But while they wait to learn if the highest court in the land will hear the case, the Braves continue to play baseball. Though they slump all the way to ninth place in June, they end up getting hot in the second half of the season and finish in fifth place again. Two months later, on December 12, 1966, the U.S. Supreme Court denies the state's appeal. They are the Atlanta Braves for good now. <laughs>